I'm proud to be speaking on behalf of the constituents from Saskatoon West. We are a diverse group of citizens from many backgrounds um, and variety of different views. And they've called me and emailed me over the past year asking about stopping online censorship. They want to be free from government overreach back then, and they feel the same way now. The people of Saskatoon West also want an end to the unscientific job-killing NDP Liberal federal mandates. Many have voiced their concerns on social media platforms. They are concerned that the government is going to block their voices. And speaking of censorship, this government has quite a history of shutting down opposing voices, even when it comes to members of their own caucus. Remember, of course, Jody Wilson-Raybould and Jane Philippot. In the last parliament, the government introduced its first attempt at regulating the internet with its bills C-10 and C-36. These bills generated incredible feedback for me via telephone, written letters, emails, and on social media. And I think it's safe to say that the overall response was extremely negative. And many in the media, many consultants, and many ordinary folks were very concerned by this legislation. And I had hoped that after seeing all of the opposition to those bills last time around, the government would smarten up and rethink this flawed legislation. Unfortunately, smartening up is not in the wheelhouse of this government, and instead they've doubled down and reintroduced essentially the same thing. Let's, let's dive into C-11. The minister stated that the goal of this bill is to target only big online streamers and exclude day-to-day -day users. It's supposedly about making Canadian content more accessible. The only problem with this argument is that Canadian content has always been accessible. Canadian producers have been able to jump onto various platforms like TikTok, YouTube, uh, Facebook and Twitter and showcasing their content without a problem. So why the urge to regulate the internet now? The current government thinks that the content available for users isn't Canadian enough for their liking. This is where things start moving towards online censorship. Essentially any content deemed unworthy by the NDP Liberals will be bumped out of your recommended feeds in exchange for government approved content. Content that isn't Canadian enough for the CRTC regulators will be sent to the back of the internet. Which leads to a question, who reaps the benefits of this? You guessed it, the legacy media. In this new age where we get most of our information online, broadcasting companies like the government's beloved taxpayer funded CBC have been left in the dust. At the end of the day, they want their content promoted over everyone else's. They're the ones scrambling for advertising revenue. This will throw the remaining content, Canadian or not, to the side. Many experts have raised concerns about this bill being very similar to the NDP Liberal government's original internet censorship bill, C-10, in the sense that it still has the power to block Canadian freedom of expression online. The former vice chair of the CRTC, Peter Menzies, stated, and I quote, the biggest difference is that it's called Bill C-11 instead of Bill C-10 and added, it's unfortunate because they're giving the CRTC enormous powers, enormous powers, and it's not in the DNA of any regulatory body to not continue to expand its turf, end quote. The major criticism of C-10 surrounded the issue of user-generated content, those pictures, audios, and videos that many of us share on a daily basis on social media. There was a clause in C-10 that exempted this from regulation, but it was removed at committee, creating a firestorm of concern. At the very least, I'd expected the government to address this issue. Instead, they added an exception to allow the CRTC to regulate user content. Michael Geist, the Canadian Research Chair in Internet and E-Commerce at Law, stated, quote, For all the talk that user-generated is, content is out, the truth is that everything from podcasts to TikTok videos fit neatly into the new exception that gives the CRTC the power to regulate such content as a program, end quote. In other words, user-generated content is not subject to regulation unless the CRTC decides it is subject to regulation, in which case it is subject to regulation. Confused yet? The truth is the vague language in this bill opens the door for the government to abuse its power and regulate user-generated content. The internet is our main go-to for information and many Canadians are earning a good living by making entertaining or educational content on various different platforms. The way this bill is currently written will limit this creativity and possibly censor a wide range of the content produced online. Twitter issued these scathing words, quote, people around the world have been blocked from accessing Twitter and other services in a similar manner as the one proposed by Canada by multiple authoritarian governments like China, North Korea and Iran, for example, under the false guise of online safety, 
impeding people's rights to access information online. They go on to say that C-11 sacrifices freedom of expression to the creation of a government-run system of surveillance for anyone who uses Twitter." End quote. Think about that. Twitter is comparing this government to North Korea. And that was before Elon Musk bought it. The NDP Liberal government is doing what we've seen time and time again. Dividing Canadians and stripping away our rights and freedoms one by one. And now the government is creating a three-headed dragon to take away freedom of expression online from Canadians. These three heads are this Internet Censorship Bill C-11, the News Regulation Bill C-18, and the expected return of Bill C-36 that blocks online content that the government doesn't like. And if you don't think this government wants to shut you down, you haven't been paying attention. We've seen this government target law-abiding firearms owners by seizing firearms from normal, hard-working Canadians and at the same time reducing sentences for criminals who smuggle illegal firearms into Canada. We've seen them target energy workers who work day and night in our natural resource sectors that, by the way, allows the leader of the NDP to fill up his $80,000 BMW with gas every morning. And we've seen them target Western Canadians and Western Canada's entire energy sector by threatening to shut it down, calling our oil and natural gas dirty. And at the same time, importing oil from countries with horrible human rights records and next to no environmental standards. And the Prime Minister still can't figure out why there's so much division in our country. He's creating it, Madam Speaker. In February, when the minister tabled this bill, he said cat videos and social media influencers would not be covered by it. However, this week, YouTube warned Canadians that this simply wasn't true. A CTV story reported that Jeanette Patel, head of government affairs at YouTube Canada, said that the draft law's wording gave the broadcast regulator scope to oversee everyday videos posted for other users to watch. She told the Natural Culture Summit in Ottawa that the bill's text appears to contradict the Heritage Minister's public assurances that it does not cover amateur content such as cat videos. I've heard back from many people across this country since last year about their concerns from when built, uh, the bill was called C-10. And since then, the calls and emails have just amplified about C-11. I have a very hard time believing the use of this bill will only target big online streamers, especially when I've seen firsthand how far this government will go to end criticism. If you flash back a few months to the Prime Minister's trip to Europe, many politicians in the EU called out the member for Papineau's actions during the convoy. And I tweeted about this. And Jerry Butts, the former Chief of Staff to the Prime Minister, tried to dismiss it right away. And he said, quote, if you're getting your news from outlets... I want to remind the Honourable Minister uh, that uh, there will be a time for question and comments and, uh, you know, the heckling is not acceptable in the House. Uh, the Honourable uh, Member for Saskatoon West has two minutes to continue. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I, I, some, sometimes these things are hard to hear or understand, but what Gerald Butt said is that if you're getting your news from news outlets whose primary purpose is to divide you from your neighbours, the topic doesn't matter. It's long past time that we figured this out, end quote. Is this what we can expect under C-11? Big government telling us what news is fact and what is misinformation when it doesn't match a certain narrative. It's obvious which voices the government wants to bring to Canadians online and which voices they'd like to tune out. The problem with this is Canada is a free and democratic nation. The foundation behind this trademark of ours is freedom of speech and expression. Listen, we've all got people who we may disagree with. But all voices deserve to be heard, regardless of whether or not they align with our political views. The moment we push forward with online censorship, divisions rise and Canadian democracy declines. Madam Speaker, we need to work on healing these wounds that have developed in our country. Leadership starts at the top. This begins with treating our fellow Canadians and members in this House with the dignity and respect that they deserve. Some have lost hope in reuniting our country, but I certainly haven't. Canada is known as one of the friendliest countries in the world. We look out for our allies, neighbours and friends. Back home in Saskatchewan, we always look out for one another, no matter how bad our winters are. And I'm proud to be from a country and a province where we are there for each other. Over the past two years, we seem to have forgotten this trademark that makes us who we are. This Bill C-11 works to divide us rather than bring us together. It will pit certain content providers against other ones. It will force Canadians to watch things they don't really want to see and make it difficult for them to watch things they do want to see. This is unacceptable. Censoring voices online is wrong and splits our nation even further. It's time to bring our country back together so we can get back to who we truly are, which is kind and friendly Canadians that are only known for heated arguments when the Stanley Cup playoffs are on. Thank you.
Questions and comments? The Honourable Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Natural Resources and to the Minister of Environment and Climate Change. Um, I listened with interest, and, and I'm wondering from an economic perspective if the member would agree that it's important for us to support our, our creative industry, which is an important economic sector in our country, and make sure that the intellectual property that they create stays here in our country, and that we sustain that industry going forward, rather than allowing it to be, to be sold off and other countries only watching creators from other countries. Is it not important for us as a country to show support for our creative industries and to show the distinct voices, prairie voices like Heartland even, and a great TV show from Alberta? Isn't it important that we have that at the center of our policies when we're looking at this? The our member Saskatoon West. Thank you, Madam Speaker, and I thank the member for the question. It's a good one. Um, absolutely, we want to support culture in Canada. We want to support our content creators. And, you know, there's always a fear by certain members of this House to, uh, to actually let our people free in the world. Our, our content creators, our talent in Canada is second to none. We have great uh, producers, actors, everybody. We have a lot of talent, and we should not be ashamed of that, and we can work hard. And we don't need to give them special rules and special, you know, control them in certain ways. They're big people. They know how to compete in the world stage. The world is their stage, and that's what, that's the beauty of, of the system that we have today with the wide open internet. And so we just need to let our Canadians shine. Uh, we need to help them where we can, but this is not the way to do it, Madam Speaker. The commentator, the Honourable Member Sandwich Gulf Islands. Thank you, and my honourable friend from Saskatoon West, thank you for the contribution into this discussion. I've, I'm of the view that we really need to get this to committee. We have so many questions. We have issues we need refining. I'm wondering to the extent that, for instance, the, the online streaming bill doesn't take into account how some online streaming and online services promote disinformation and misinformation. We see it more now than we did last year when we were looking at C-10. And I'm wondering if you would agree that it's time to get the bill to committee so that we can hear the witnesses and refine and improve the legislation. The Honourable Member for Saskatoon West. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank the member for the question. Uh, you know, it's up to the House to put this to committee, but I would just say that last time this bill went to committee, uh, there was a very important provision that was removed that caused a lot of stress and it, it, it caused a lot of uh, reactions in my office for sure. And so, uh, you know, the committee will do its work when the time comes uh, and it will add or strengthen or do whatever that needs to be done to this bill. But at the end of the day, we have to be very, very careful that we are not limiting and constricting the ability of our content producers to actually compete in the internet world that we have today. Thank you. Thomas, you're on member for Tobik Mac Thank you, Madam Speaker. And thanks to my honorable colleague for his remarks and, and thoughtful reflections on this bill. I'm, I'm just wondering from the, my honorable colleague if he would agree with me that this is a slippery slope that it seems like this government is moving on in this bill towards determining what is truth and what is not. Who gets to ultimately to determine that? And as it relates to disinformation, I think Canadians are rightfully very concerned that this is an overreach by a government that just seems to continually be trampling on their individual rights and freedoms of speech and conscience and belief. And I think uh, you've raised some very appropriate concerns. So appreciate any further comments you would have on that. I don't think that I have raised any concerns, I would hope. And I would just ask the member to address his questions through the chair and not directly um, to the member. Uh, the Honourable Member for Saskatoon West has a minute and 20 seconds left to respond. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, uh, thank you to my Honourable Member for the question. It's a very, very good question. And, and this is kind of the heart, I think, of what, what we're talking about here today. Um, it, conceptually, it's easy to say, you know, this person can speak and this person can't. But in reality, it's very difficult to do that because who, who is the person that's going to decide that? We all know that there is content on the internet that is, that is wrong, that is incorrect, and we know there's content that is true. It's sometimes hard to tell, and that's where we, we need to do some work. But when you start saying we can listen to this group, not listen to that group, this news organization is valid, this one isn't, uh, that's a very, very slippery slope, as, as the member stated. And so uh, we have to be very careful as we go down this road. Uh, we do need to be careful. We do need to have some controls over things, but the way that this is written, it gives way too much power to the CRTC to be the gatekeepers, to be able to say who can, who, who is good and who is bad, and, and that's that's not a good place for us to go. So we need to be very concerned about that, Madam Speaker. Resume.